And that's the promise of precision medicine, delivering the right treatments at the right time, every time, to the right person. And for a small but growing number of patients, that future is already here. Advances in genetics and in interpreting rare gene variants are having an impact on being able to diagnose and identify um, diseases that heretofore have been called undiagnosed. And uh, with more common diseases, common cancers, diabetes, coronary artery disease, uh, we are beginning to understand much better the mechanisms that give rise to those diseases because of the genes that are being discovered that underlie susceptibility. And every one of those places in the genome we detect is a possible new drug target. It's a possible place this might help us understand why some people are helped by a drug, why other people are not. Pharmacogenetics can predict how you're going to respond to a drug based on your genetics. We're using that sort of information now to help predict what people might respond well to a drug or which people should really avoid that drug because it might make them sick or it might not help them at all. We have a variety of drugs we can use to treat any disease and we'd like to select the best one right at the beginning so you don't have to go back to the doctor again and again and change the dose and change the drug. It's the difference between cause-driven medicine and effect-driven medicine. So I would say traditional medicine is very effect-driven. We look at the symptoms and we say, well, we think this is what the person has, and these drugs seem to treat these symptoms, so let's, let's apply them here. With precision medicine, we're saying, well, what's the cause of this person's problems? What's the cause of this disease? And can we address that at a molecular level at its root? You're seeing this now in cancers with the, the super responders, where if you genomically target a treatment for cancer and you nail it, um, I mean, you're seeing effectively, you know, immediate and total recovery from these formerly almost incurable diseases. A patient will have metastatic lung cancer to their brain, to their bones, to their liver, their lung is filled with cancer, and you find one of these genetic abnormalities, for example, an elk translocation, and you give them a, a drug targeted to that translocation and all the cancer melts away. And the same thing can happen in rare disease as well, and any other disease that has a genetic basis, because you're really targeting the root cause. And if you, if you can stop it there, you can stop the disease cold in its tracks. It also has to do, in many cases, with preventing disease altogether uh, through very early diagnosis, uh, before there are any symptoms, and then taking actions that prevent the disease ever from occurring. So you know, there are many, many different levels uh, on which precision medicine works. All of these um, implications were made possible by the advanced technology that's developed even in the last 10 years so that we could actually impact a patient's life. This is, if you will, the, the lowest hanging fruit for making improvements. Um, but over the next decade, I'm uh, convinced that everyone who goes to the doctor is going to have a testing performed or treatment um, being delivered based on what we now consider precision medicine. I think this will become the norm in the future.